looking at behind the scenes, not only in uh, the, the, the writings of the Bible and the teaching of the Bible, but also in our own lives. And I liken this to going to a drama or going to the theatre or anybody been to the theatre recently to see any dramas? Some of us don't need to go to the theatre to have a drama. Some of us, we have our home version, we have our do-it-yourself version of drama, don't we? Anybody in that bracket here? Quite a few of us can I, more people can identify with that than are going to the theatre. Um, so yeah, um, there's always a drama in some people's houses, isn't there? In some people's lives. I know we have quite a few, hey, we've got some drama queens, but we've got some drama kings in our church as well, so... So, hey, it's not just about the women, you know. Uh, so, yeah, so that's all good. So, you know what I'm talking about when I talk about going to a theatre or going to a dramatic play, and you're watching what happens on the stage, and the centre point tends to be what's happening on the stage. And I was saying, I'm so nosy about stuff like that. When I go to a play, say with Mags, my favourite is Joseph. And the Technicolor Dreamcoat, love it, absolutely love it. I've done the Phantom of the Opera, I love that too. In fact, that was very, very fascinating. And I used to watch what was happening behind the scenes as much as I was, I was happening on the scenes. And I was really interested how, how these people were running around in, 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 in dark clothing, actually thinking that they were invisible. But hey, they're not. Uh, if you actually put your focus in the right place, you can see them all running around, pushing this out, pushing that out. And I'm, I'm thinking to myself, I wonder what the scene's going to be like when the lights come on. And the Bible is written in the sense of um, we are looking at this, the, the center stage and seeing things play out down through the centuries, down through the generations. Very often we don't get an a, 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 a accurate long look at what's going on behind the scenes, but the Bible does give us some insight into what is happening behind the scenes, but most of us as Christians and even Bible scholars don't actually pick up some of that which is going on behind the scenes. So, for instance, an example is God becomes... Uh, a man, God becomes flesh, the incarnation, the virgin birth. We don't see what goes on behind the scenes. For instance, we don't know exactly what goes on in heaven uh, just before the Lord says, who will go for us, who's going? And God says, God the Son, the Word, the living Word says, I will go. And he comes and the living Word becomes flesh. There's a whole behind the scenes look at that truth and, 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 and I want to bring that into our day and into our time right where we are now. Because I, I, I'm, I'm not sure that we are too often aware and conscious of the fact that right now in your life things are happening seen and unseen. Visibly and invisibly and some of those things we're conscious of, but some of them we are not conscious of until we get into a place of revelation in the Spirit of God. And then God begins to touch our eyes. God be begins to touch our understanding also, especially through reading his word with a, 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 a sense of the prophetic honors at the time of reading. Is everybody getting this? So we, we, we know from the scripture, and I said this in the nine o'clock service, you, you really, really have to not be religious about your faith. You really have to get out of religion. We live by faith and we walk by faith, not by feelings. Th that, is, that is right at the introduction of this whole play, if you like. Religion is about just doing things, thinking that those formulas are going to work for us and they will absolve us from time to time when we trip up and make mistakes and blah, blah, we do this, we do that, we do the other and we're okay. 
But that is not the way God ever intended it to be. God intended it to be, Christianity in other words, should be lived from the inside out, not from the outside in. So in other words, it's down to a personal, individual, inbuilt relationship that I have with the Father, with the Father God through the Son and the Holy Spirit. In other words, like God said, the, t- the tablets of the Ten Commandments written on stone that were external were only foreshadowing a time that would come when God says, I'm going to write my plan and purpose, not on tablets of stone, but on the heart. Yeah? So that, so that, 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 is, that, that God is on the inside. So then we read his word and there's an ignition between what we're reading externally and what we're imbibing internally and we get ignition and we get traction and we get belief from operating in faith. Does that make, make sense? So, so you, you, you coming in your prayer time, you don't just go and have a moan at God. Okay, some of you do. But you don't leave it there. You do what the psalmist did. Lord, I'm just fed up of this. I'm fed up of that. I'm having a hard time. I'm sick of it. Look at all the ungodly. They're prospering. And here's, here's the godly. And we're having a right tough time of it. We, you know, we, this is happening to us. That's happening to us. But look at them. Look at them sinners. Why can't you just smash the teeth in? That's, that's the psalmist is saying that. Why can't you just give them a kick up the pants? Just do something to them, Lord. Uh, destroy them in your mercy (laughs) so the psalmist gets a bit like that but then after he's written a few bars of that song imagine singing that Lord we want you to smash their teeth in we want you to really go for them and destroy every single one of them blessed be the name of the Lord (laughs) it kind of doesn't work but, but when the psalmist gets to the end of that song he's, he's, he's written it all finishes up with a mellowing and a coming back to reality and a coming back to what is fundamentally correct is that everything bows to the name of the Lord for the name of the Lord is a strong tower those who are right in God's eyes run into it and they're safe so, so, so I'm trying to say that so you understand that there is something being played out behind the scenes that unless you're born again, I don't mean religious, unless you're born again, unless you've got the Spirit of God on the inside, you're not going to get it. You're not going to see it, you're not going to feel it. I've talked about feelings before, we don't live by feelings, but we have feelings. And we, we also have discernment that can be felt sometimes. So we have an inner witness. So I'm truncating through a whole pile of stuff this morning, but I want to go, have you found what you found? Okay, so I just want to go first of all, um, there's this little verse that tells us about the princes of this world. The princes of this world, I, I want to tell you today, you'll be really comforted to know that the princes of this world is not Vladimir Putin. The princes of this world is not Donald Trump. It's not Boris Johnson. And I'm not just picking on him, it's not Jeremy Corbyn either. It's not Kim Jong Lee? Jung Jung? Kim Jong Jong. Oh, right, whatever. It's not him. It's not, it's not all of these people, as powerful as they are, the princes of this world that Paul is referring to are celestial leaders who are over the nations. They're over the nations, but listen, they're not godly. And you want to know why our nations and our world is globally in an awful state. And I said this earlier, I'm not going to go into the traditional preach now, so I, I want you to notice, I'm right off the scale now, I'm right off my notes and everything, but I want you to know that right now there is landmass in the Arctic Circle the size of Belgium that he's burning right now it's not got to the news because it's, it's, it's difficult to get to the news um, because there is an awful lot of controlling of the media going on because we're already 
the scientists will tell you that already in the Arctic fires that are happening right now, the whole of Europe and everybody else will have missed their targets in one week. Because there is so much CO2 going up in the atmosphere through this. We also know, uh, I was reading this through the day in my research, that in northern Egypt and in Yemen, as if Yemen hasn't had enough, in the Sudan and even parts of Somalia, there is the biggest swarm of locusts in history. Thankfully, the Yemenis are really, really clever people because they've been low on food recently, so they've started to find out that locusts are quite tasty. So to every dark cloud, there's a silver lining. But I want you to know these things are happening in our world. They are one-off things that are happening. But there's so many one-offs, isn't there? We've just had the highest temperature on record in the UK. Apparently on Tuesday, it was at Cambridge. 38.7 degrees. Beating a 38.1, I think, of the previous year. We actually chose right. We were at Oxford. Anyway. So all of these one-offs, are, what, what is going behind the scenes? Now there is causation to every one of these things that's happening in our world. There's causation to it, okay? There is a cause to all of these things, and I'm not saying it's right. The one-off use plastics. We as a church, you know, we should be, we should be appalled at one-off use plastics. I, I don't want my apples in a plastic thing I've got to throw out and it doesn't get recycled as a Christian I find that's rubbish pardon the pun I don't want that to happen what are the alternatives nothing's happening there are so many issues that are environmental church, Christian we need to be annoyed about those things oh well that went down like a don't you think when I go to Romania and I go to India I keep teaching our kids over there stop throwing your litter I'm really popular for it every time they throw some litter down I pick it up what are you doing uncle I'm picking your, your rubbish up why because I don't want to live in a rubbish can and that's what we'll be living in if we keep doing that yeah so all of these things are really really important for Christians Okay, so the reason why I'm saying all that stuff is, is that there is causation behind every one of these things. We are causing it, but don't kid yourself. Behind the scenes, these things are predicted and prophesied. And that's the point I'm saying. Behind the scenes, everything is playing out right now. Do you know that you are living in a unique time? The prophets never lived in this time. Uh, the ancient prophets. The ancient apostles, the, uh, the, the apostles in the, in the first century those down through the ages never lived in our time they didn't see the things that we're seeing right now you know the bible says that when the lord comes back every eye will see him that means every time zone how is that even possible well it is now it was written thousands of years ago how is that even possible we used to, as kids we were brought up on that truth and we were thinking how's that going to happen how's that going to happen? you can't see him. if I'm in India I can't see him if you're, if you're in Greenland you're in Russia you're, how are we all going to see him now we can but it was written thousands of years ago I want you to notice that the Bible is a supernatural book it's a supernatural book the Bible is not like any other book you know the fastest I said it in the nations the nations now do you know the fastest growing church is in Iran and China did you know that? The fastest growing churches in China and Iran. They actually predicted now, church leaders, that the desperate part of the world as far as church and being born again, not religion, Christianity, being born again is in the West, not the East. The East is overtaking us in terms of people who love Jesus Christ and I want to provoke you I want to pr provoke you if you've come from another nation to this nation you are not here just because of a good job you're not here because of a career move you're here because God sent you you're here because God sent you and, and the rest of us who, who go back us Anglo-Saxons I'm not I'm a Heinz 57 mate but, but I, I'm saying to you now we need to be challenged in this country because we've become far far uh, too to what's the word uh, minimalistic in our faith 
we need to we need to wake up we need to be a, a, this is a nation that took the, the took the good news out across the world now we need the world to bring it back to us because behind the scenes God is moving the furniture around praise God behind the scenes God is moving things around says in Ezekiel I will overturn overturn says the Lord I will overturn 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 that's what God's doing right now so you, you need to know there's a plan that's what I'm saying today there's a plan there's a plan over the nations so look at this scripture let's move it on from that scripture uh, very quickly this is about two disciples who were going on the road to Emmaus and they were down and they were sad and they, they were really really miserable they'd heard that Jesus they'd seen Jesus they'd met Jesus and they were convinced that he was the Messiah but the last thing that they heard of it and saw was that he'd been crucified on a cross buried and this was the third day and nothing's happening but they had heard a little rumor from the women that uh, they went to the tomb and there was no one there but they couldn't put two and two together to meet to make four because they were pessimists and two and two to a pessimist two and two is minus one but they couldn't, they, couldn't, they couldn't do the math and they heard the, 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 the good news of the women but they hadn't believed and they didn't know it but there was a stranger on the way on their journey when they were having a moan and a groan on the journey it was probably a six mile journey and a six mile moan and groan if Jesus hadn't turned up and Jesus turns up and he starts to walk with them and say hiya guys how's it going the guy says well you know we're a bit we're down really he says why what's the problem so, and they said we're, 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 haven't you heard of what things have happened over the last few days so Jesus I love this Jesus says what, what things he's the thing and he says what thing because he wants to hear it from them do you get that see this teaches us a lot about how God deals with us right in your conversation and in your daily journey when you're walking to somewhere and Jesus turns up do you know what they didn't know it was Jesus they'd spent time with Jesus but they didn't know this was Jesus because their eyes were restrained most people's eyes are restrained from seeing things if they got closer to truth and closer to the word of God their eyes would be opened are you hearing that as well as seeing it hearing that so there's, there's Jesus he's walking with them on the road to Emmaus he says what things he said oh this Messiah Jesus of Nazareth he came and he, we, we were convinced he was the Messiah but now it's you know you crucified him deli delivered him up and this is the third day and we don't know what's happened but we heard this story about from the women but you know it's just the women you know women just talking and I think they just got a bit emotional you know and said they saw him but you know you know what it's a bit like when they get a bit emotional and Jesus talks to them then he says foolish ones slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke ought not the Christ to have suffered these things and to enter into his glory and beginning at Moses and all the prophets he expounded to them in all the scriptures listen in all the scriptures so guess what you've got Jesus a personal Bible study from Jesus on the, on the road to Emmaus and he's picking every prophecy that spoke of himself and he's, he's being a stranger to them and they still haven't got it so he gets to the end of the journey and they turn in for the night and they beg him to stay at the, the, the place so he stays and then while they're breaking bread Jesus he touches their eyes and they, they realize who it is and it's wow bang that's it and as soon as they as soon as they found out it's Jesus what does Jesus do he's pretty antisocial he vanishes he vanishes wow why why didn't he stay because it's about faith it's about having faith it's not about having all the evidence brought to you in a wheelbarrow and dumped on top of your knee it's about you having faith to believe that as it was written as it was promised so shall it be it, more blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe said Jesus wow that's why faith is important personal individual faith that's what we preach in this church we're not, not preaching religion you can't have a relationship with God unless you have faith in your heart faith in your life you say oh Pastor Paul I need more faith I need more faith listen I say this loads you don't need more faith you need less doubt 
less doubt where Jesus said only believe all things are possible when we can believe I'm going to wrap up yesterday we had the we had the uh, outreach at Eccles and I'd done some research this, for me this is powerful for some, some of you it'll go like that it'll give you a middle part in some of you some of you haven't got hair so excuse me it when we were there yesterday, we, were, we set up right in front of what is called Eccles Cross. Eccles Cross was moved 58 yards north of where it was uh, originally. The original Eccles Cross, was, I found out, was at the bus terminus that's been developed. And so they had to move it. And they made it look all kind of authentic. The stone that we were there yesterday, somebody had told me that it had been worn down by somebody standing on it and walking. No, it hadn't. It was actually made that way to look like it was ancient. Um, yeah, it does look like that. And it's got a little lovely water fountain in it, which doesn't work. Mind you, it doesn't need to the way it rained yesterday, does it? Anyway, <laughs> what I found out about Eccles Cross was amazed me. Amazed me. Eccles Cross came about because there were 300 Celtic missionaries came in the 5th century to that place now I, I, I wanted to find out more about that it really touched my heart that so Celtic missionaries at the time the Romans would have been here then I found out about the Romans that they developed that area and they, uh, they developed it as a kind of a garrison point they put a fort in there that was a midway uh, 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 way for the journey from Ribchester in Lancas Lancashire on the River Ribble Ribchester then they came to here so they could get to Chester Manchester didn't exist then then the Romans started to build this area here that was a fort uh, Manchester but before that the Romans were there and the Celtic missionaries who were the missionaries too? they must have been missionaries to the Romans and guess what? They put a cross there at Eccles Cross. They put it there. It hadn't become Eccles Cross at the time because Eccles came a bit later on. But that was where the cross, Eccles Cross came out of that. So it came out of the Celts, the Celts Cross. The Celts then did their missionary work and obviously the Romans embraced that and they didn't hang them all and flog them all and all the rest of it they embraced the gospel message the good news of Jesus Christ come on guys we think we think it belongs to our age group it doesn't every genealogy every age every century every decade has preached Jesus Christ praise God that's why when we call him the ancients of days boy it's, it's powerful so the Saxons came along and you know what they put their own cross up so we've gone from the Celts and the Romans to the Saxons and the Saxon cross lasted for hundreds of years. Even the Normans embraced it. Is this good? Yeah, are you liking this? This is on your doorstep, this. This is behind the scenes of what's gone on through the centuries that we didn't know about, right? But we have it written down, so we should know about it. Because it's important. Sometimes you only know the future when you know your history. So what happens then? Well, you wouldn't believe it. The cross that the Saxons set up there was a kind of a wooden cross and it got smaller and smaller. It shrunk, shrunk until it just became a, a skewed log. And believe it or not, it was run over by accident at the end of the Second World War because nobody knew what it was. And you know what? I couldn't believe it. It just tells me so much about the neglecting of the cross of Jesus Christ in all its power and all its glory it will do you no good until you realise what happened and what took place at the cross of Calvary but to those of us who believe it is the power of God unto salvation praise God it was the foolishness of the cross that brings us the wisdom of Christ it's the foolishness of the cross that brings salvation to the soul and it doesn't have to be a Celtic cross. It doesn't have to be a Saxon cross, a Roman cross, a Norman cross, a Holy cross, an Eccles cross. It just has to be the one cross that Jesus died upon. Because that is the cross of redemption. There have been many crosses. Many crosses. 
But it's not the cross that's important. Don't stone me. It's not the cross that's important. It's the one who died upon the cross that's important because he's the savior of the world. Because he's the savior of the world. My last point is this, right off script. My last point is this. Rachel talked about generational curses before. There are many, many curses on our nation. I want to tell you there's national curses on nations. Did you know that? There are national curses. The, the princes of this world, the princes over the nations, they're responsible for it. But there are curses. There are curses when you, when you worship idols. You worship de- demons, the Bible says. Anybody who worships an idol actually worshiping a demon, a devil. You, you, that's what the Bible teaches. You're not worshiping a god of wood or stone because there's no such thing. Behind those icons are devils and demons. And they bring curses onto people's lives. When Jesus died, he didn't die in the Garden of Gethsemane, thank God. He didn't die on the Mount of Olives, thank God. He didn't die in the wilderness when he was tempted of Satan, thank God. He didn't die in Capernaum or Nazareth. Jesus died upon the cross of Calvary, a wooden cross resembling a tree. And the, the, the scripture says in the law, cursed is everyone who hangs upon a tree. The reality is that God became flesh so that he could hang on a tree. So the curse of all humanity could be reversed in the person of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. He went through it so that I could get it off my back. He went through every situation for you and for me. Uh, He didn't fail once. He didn't slip up once. He led an innocent, blameless life and went to Calvary and suffered and bled and died so that if I failed a thousand times or ten thousand times, still I could have redemption through Jesus Christ, my Lord and Saviour. And it is for you today to know behind the scenes someone paid the price for you someone gave it all for you someone loved you more than anybody else ever could or would somebody loved you so much he hung he bled he died but he did it all because he knew that the day was coming when he would rise again victorious majestically the God of glory and can I say the God of of all the nations he is the Lord praise God he is the Lord I want you to stand with me right now will you do that please